Hello ladies and gentlemen, it is high time that we made an effort to arrange the scientific evidences and establish the antiquity of the Indian civilization. In order to do that, I have authored a book titled India and Egypt very recently. I would like to share briefly the contents of the book with all of you. As the name of the book India in Egypt suggests, it is all about an intense connectivity between the Indian and the Egyptian civilization. In fact, I have made an effort to establish that the Egyptian civilization was established by the Indian origin people. This concept may appear unbelievable at this stage because in the meantime, what we have been taught in our education system does not encourage such a line of thinking. It is also possible that what we have been taught may not be correct in every sense. It is our responsibility to arrange the pre-recorded period of India on the basis of available ground evidences. We have to include scientific data which has emerged in the last two or three decades, especially in the subject of genetics and archaeology. I have compiled information from all possible scientific sources and also from our ancient texts like Rig Veda. In the process, a completely new picture of the possible pre-recorded period of India has emerged. It took me 20 years to arrange the narrative, collecting evidences from every corner of the Indian subcontinent. I would like to show you a video how the history of India unfolds when we arrange the history on the basis of available ground evidences. Though Indian civilization is discussed along with other ancient civilizations of the world like the Sumerian, Mesopotamian, Egyptian and Greek civilizations, it could be much older than the rest. Presently, the Indian civilization is considered 5000 years old and its origin is explained rather vaguely linked with Indo-Aryan migration. Discovery of several newer archaeological sites like Mehergarh, Gulf of Kambat Cultural Complex, Rakhi Gadi, Virana, Lahura Deva and Pumpuhat suggest that this civilization is at least 10,000 years old. It is also possible that the Indian civilization played the role of a mother in the origin of other ancient civilizations. Evidences suggest that the Indian origin fraternities had travelled to distant lands long ago to establish other ancient civilizations. At a later date, a large number of them returned to India for various reasons. This reverse migration phenomena is popularly known as Indo-Aryan migration. In fact, reverse migration of Indian origin fraternities resulted in the collapse of all other ancient civilizations of the world almost at the same time. As such, mysteriously, we do not find any reason for the collapse of other ancient civilizations. On the other hand, Indian civilization not only continues, but they also constructed several archaeological marvels which are comparable to the best archaeological monuments of the world. Excellent skill in stone cutting and creating stone sculptures remains at the center of such constructions. It is possible to establish the above view when we arrange the genetic, archaeological, linguistic and cultural evidences in a meticulous manner. I intend to initiate a discussion in that direction with available ground evidences and analysis of available scientific data. My first endeavor is to establish that the Egyptian civilization was developed by Indian origin fraternities. At this juncture, we have to consider that AMH or anatomically modern humans scientifically known as Homo sapiens originated in Africa about 2 lakh years ago. They arrived in India about 65,000 years ago following their out of Africa move. They possibly followed a southern route known as the Great Coastal Migration. Though there are many theories regarding the early migration of AMH, this is the most accepted view. In all probability, AMH reached Andamans from the Bengal Myanmar coast. 
they continued their eastward journey farther all the way to Australia. It is possible that India served as the intermediate host of AMH and they continuously lived there for 65,000 years. They reached Europe much later, about 45 to 50,000 years ago, possibly from India during an interglacial period. AMH could survive in India during both the glacial and interglacial periods because of availability of favorable terrains. During the glacial period, they lived south of the Vindhya Parbat marked as green territory in the map in eastern, central and southern India. While during the interglacial period, they also spread to northern and western India marked as blue territory in the map. The presence of a large number of dark complexion tribes in India suggests the continuous survival of AMH there. Whereas absence of any such human diversity in Europe and rest of Asia suggests the spread of anatomical model humans in these regions only during the interglacial period. Though AMH reached Europe and Northern Asia during every interglacial period, they could not survive there during the severe weather of glacial maximum and became extinct. We have evidences of extinction of Neanderthals in Europe and Denisovians in Siberia 40,000 years ago during a previous glacial maximum. It is possible that Indian origin people spread to other regions of Asia and Europe during the interglacial period once the trans Himalayan migration was possible. The trans Himalayan migration path bifurcated from Mount Kailash. One route descended from Kailash and followed the Makran coast to reach the Horn of Africa and Nile Delta where the Egyptian civilization developed. Both the Indus Valley Civilization and Sumerian Civilization emerged on this route. While the other route from Mount Kailash went through Asia Minor, now Turkey, to Europe, the Mesopotamian Civilization emerged on this route. Presently, the pre-recorded period is arranged on the basis of various subjects like anthropology, archaeology, ancient texts including religious texts and mythology, spread of languages, culture and social customs and so on. Very recently, genetics has emerged as a useful and very effective subject for the purpose. As the events related to the pre-recorded period in Europe are few, it is generally discussed under two broad heads, Paleolithic period and Neolithic period. However, as AMS lived in India continuously for 65,000 years, while arranging the pre-recorded period of India, in addition to the above subjects, we need to consider other subjects as well. These newer subjects in relation to India need to be identified and appreciated. I intend to discuss the pre-recorded period of India under the following heads. Origin of several fraternities who identified themselves with various animal symbols. Events related to glacial and interglacial periods. A probable period of matriarchal culture. The spread of Indian origin fraternities to distant lands. Various possible migration routes and trans Himalayan migration. Reverse migration of Indian origin fraternities from Egypt and Europe. It is possible to establish the evidences of origin of newer AMH fraternities on the eastern coast of India. It is also possible to establish the migration paths of the Indian origin fraternities to distant lands. Our humble mission is to investigate the available features and ground evidences and available data in order to review our history and learn about it from an entirely new perspective. A number of animal images are seen in every archaeological structure in India and in all the ancient civilizations of the world. It is unlikely that they serve a decorative purpose only. In all probability, animal symbols like Naga, Tiger, Lion, Elephant, Fish, Turtle, Primate each represented a human fraternity in the ancient period. When two such fraternities united to form a fusion fraternity, it was represented by a fusion animal image. 
These fusion animal images are not understood and are generally described as mythical images because no such animal exists in nature. A winged lion image, possibly representing an ethnic fusion of lion and avian fraternities, is seen in India, Greece and Egypt. It establishes its widespread distribution in three ancient civilizations of the world. This symbol was created in Greece and Egypt 2000 to 5000 years ago, which has remained in archaeological structures as images frozen in time. However, in India, such images were created till very recently. Another fusion animal image seen in the Narmer palette of Egypt has the face of a tiger, neck of a serpent or naga, and body of a primate. Naga, bog, and primate were the three early Indian origin fraternities which migrated to distant lands. As the Narmer palette image signify the union of Upper and Lower Egypt by Narmer, the first king of Egypt, this image suggests that it was established by an union of three Indian origin fraternities. Another interesting composite animal image in Majuli Island, Assam shows features of the elephant, lion, avian and horse swallowing a fish. This possibly depicts formation of an allied force to destroy the ruler of a territory represented by the fish. Several newer AMH fraternities originated in India and they adopted various animal images as their ethnic symbols. The coastal dweller fraternities identified themselves with the Naga, fish, turtle and goose symbols while the forest dwellers or the hunter-gatherers identified themselves with the Naga, bog, primate, elephant and owl symbols. It is possible to arrange the animal symbols meaningfully, establishing their interpersonal relationships. It appears that these animal symbols served as vahuns of the Indian deities belonging to various fraternities. In the Egyptian civilization, however, deities are seen with their heads replaced by the head of the animal to which fraternity the deity belonged. Over a period, Naga descended fraternities adopted the fish and avian symbols. Indian origin fraternities often adopted newer animal symbols to represent a transformed fraternity in a distant land. The tiger fraternity adopted the lion image and thus we find both the tiger and lion as the Vahuns of Durga. I have drawn a flow chart to arrange the ancestry of various Indian origin fraternities and their respective descendants. Over a period of time, descendant of the fish fraternity adopted the ram and horse symbols. Interestingly, the horse fraternity was known as Osho fraternity and as they spread over many regions, the continent acquired the name Asia. As the Osho fraternity of two territories joined together during their reverse migration, they were known as Oshinis or Oshidoi, meaning two horses. Two horses forming a twin brother team is common in the iconography of many regions of Eurasia, including India. Finally, it is possible that during the matriarchal period, the fraternity adopted the feminine images as their ethnic identity, like the cow. As they adopted the patriarchal culture, they adopted the bull as their ethnic symbol. Both the cow and the bull are considered as sacred animals in India. Bull is also the Bahun of Shiva. A complex Vahun of Goddess Ganga provided clues regarding the composition of various fraternities which migrated along the river during the matriarchal period. Image of Lamasu suggested that in the Assyrian Empire, the king was dependent on the bull and the avian fraternities. Similarly, a complex sculpture in Sri Lanka suggested that Oshur fraternity emerged from the Naga and Turtle fraternity and they worshipped Shiva, the deity of the bull fraternity and Saraswati, the deity of the avian fraternity. It took me many years of analysis and collection of photographs from not only all over Indian subcontinent but also foreign territories like Egypt to understand and arrange the sequence of the process. 
it took me some time to understand the complexity of fusion fraternities. I had to scratch my head for years to understand the phases of matriarchal and patriarchal period and the subsequent alteration of the animal symbols. I feel that understanding the hierarchy of the animal symbols would help arrange the migration path of various early human fraternities all over the world. It is interesting to note that surnames like Nag, Bag or Baghila, Hathi, Shingho or Singh and Pakhi are still common in India, especially in Bengal. Similarly, we find fraternities like Mech and Koch in North Bengal. In all probability, Mech originated from Mach or Machi meaning fish and they belong to the fish fraternity. Similarly, Koch possibly originated from the word Kochop or Kachua meaning turtle. There are territories in Assam and Bengal like Kachar, Koch Bihar, Koch Hajo and Kushtia suggesting their settlements. It is most likely that these early human fraternities named their settlements after the animal symbols which represented their ethnic fraternities. As these fraternities migrated from the east coast of India, their migration path can be arranged. The migration path of Bag fraternity can be traced from Bagdogra in North Bengal, ascending along Bagmati river and reaching Baglumkali temple in Nepal and finally Baghdad in Mesopotamia across Mount Koilash. A number of localities named after Bag in Afghanistan like Baglam, Bagram and so on. Baghdad is located on river Tigris and the word Tigris originated from the word Tiger or Tigris. In many Eastern Indian languages, Bag means tiger. Thus, both the city and the adjacent river are named after the same animal species, which possibly represented a human fraternity. Is it just a coincidence? Interestingly, it is only in India that tiger is known as Bag. Similarly, it is possible to trace the migration path of the fish fraternity. Fish is the Bahun of Ganga suggesting the onward migration of the fish fraternity from Ganga Ridhi along river Ganga from the east coast of India. We have Mechi Nodi and Mechi Kali in Nepal. We find territories like Mesopotamia, Masa of Turkey, Macedonia and finally the Mycenaean civilization of ancient Greece. Koch or turtle fraternity migration path can be established from eastern India along river Jamuna of Bangladesh to reach Koilash. Incidentally, turtle is the bahun of river Jamuna, suggesting its migration along the river. As one descends along Indus from Koilash, one reaches Kutch of Gujarat and Kutchi district of Balochistan. Following the Persian Gulf, one reaches the territory of Kassites in Mesopotamia and finally the Kutch fraternity emerges as Kushites in the Horn of Africa. It is possible that the Caspian Sea and Caucasus Mountains were so named as they were Koch fraternity settlements. Hathi is one of the most successful Indian origin fraternities which spread all over the world. They named their settlements Hathi and Hattusa in Turkey. Their king was Hattisuli and their kingdom was known as Hittite Empire. Their settlement along the Mediterranean coast was named Gojo, now famous as the Gaza Strip, and their settlement in Lower Egypt was named Giza, also from Gojo. As the Gojo fraternity was matriarchal in nature, their settlement in Afghanistan was known as Gajani. The Ganga Shagar Mela is held on Makor Sankranti day on the east coast of India. Makor, or the elephant-headed fish, is the Bahun of Ganga suggesting migration of this fusion fraternity along river Ganga. The Makran coast derived its name from the Makor fraternity settlement who takes care of the Mogor or crocodile. In the Horn of Africa, they were known as Makuria language speakers and their kingdom was known as the Makuria kingdom. Interestingly, many Nubian families of Egypt keep crocodile as a pet and draw crocodile in front of their house. These families possibly belong to the Makor fraternity. Pali language spread from India to the Mediterranean coast, Egypt and Greece. 
Their settlement was known as Palestine, now Palestine. On the other hand, spoken Sanskrit language spread to Anatolia and Europe. The same Indian origin fraternity settlements were known by different names in these two territories. The elephant fraternity settlement was known as Hathi in Turkey and as Gojo or Giza in the Mediterranean coast and Egypt. Similarly, fish settlements were known as Mesopotamia, Massa, Motsu, Macedonia and Mycenaean civilization in Europe and they were known as the Mean Fraternity in Egypt who established the Minyan civilization in ancient Greece. Indian languages probably remained popular for several thousand years on the Mediterranean coast and around. Thus, when new fraternities like Shingho and Osho formed there after several thousand years, they had Indian names. Osho means horse, Shingho means lion in Eastern India like in Bengal, I am told it is known as Simha in Sanskrit. It thus appears that Indian origin languages spread to distant lands as people settled there. Over a period, these languages became global. It seems that Indian origin people with their languages possibly established other ancient civilizations. Our humble mission is to investigate the ground evidences and scientific data in order to review our history and learn about it from an entirely new perspective. Several ethnic fraternities adopted various animal symbols and as they migrated from the east coast they spread Indian languages to those distant lands. What was so special about the east coast of India where all these ethnic fraternities developed? Is it possible that newer image fraternities like R1 Alpha and R1 Bravo haplogroups in Y chromosome originated in this region? Unless we are able to establish the unique nature of the Bengal Myanmar coast to justify the origin of these newer genetic identities, the discussion regarding migration of various ethnic fraternities from the east coast becomes baseless and also the spread of Indian languages. Interestingly, R1 alpha haplogroup in Y chromosome genetic identity is found in the entire Indo-European language speaking territory extending from Eastern India to Western Europe. Thus, this entire territory is clearly linguistically and genetically continuous. Europe also has high percentage of urban Bravo haplogroup in Y chromosome genetic identity. This genetic identity is found in various other regions of Asia including India and Mesopotamia and also in the Afro-Asian speaking Central Africa. Interestingly, an isolated pocket of this genetic identity is found on the east coast of India which has not received the required attention so far. These isolated pockets need to be included while charting the early migration path of the fraternity. In fact, these isolated pockets could be their oldest settlements. Presently, it is believed that R1 alpha and R1 bravo haplogroups in Y chromosome both originated in Eastern Europe near the European Stipi and Anatolia region. However, many scholars consider that the origin of R1 alpha in South Asia cannot be ruled out. In fact, Underhill, who conducted a widespread genetic analysis of the Indo-European speaking territory, marked a region near Gujarat as having the oldest R1 alpha and several Himalayan pockets where the concentration of R1 alpha is extremely high. This itself clashes with the hypothesis of European Stipi as the site of origin of R1 alpha. A number of Aboriginal tribes live in the Andaman archipelago. However, there is very little discussion about who were these people, when and how did they reach there. The only possible explanation is that they walked into the Andaman archipelago from the Bengal Myanmar coast when a land bridge formed. During the glacial maximum, the sea level subsides by about 400 feet or 130 meters and the Bengal coastline recedes connecting Andamans with the mainland. During glacial period, for several thousand years, a huge coastal landmass surfaces between the Bengal and Myanmar coast which is referred to as the Bengal Glacial Coastal Self in this book. At this time, the population of two distinct genetic territories, the east coast of India 
and Southeast Asia intermix. And this genetic union produces newer genetic identities like R1 alpha and R1 bravo haplogroups in Y chromosome. As the seawater gradually rises during the interglacial period, this coastal landmass submerges, displacing the settled population. They settle on the Bengal coast and adopted various animal symbols as their ethnic identity. To begin with, they were bare-bodied and were known as Nanga, who adopted the Naga or serpent as their ethnic symbol. It is possible that their mother goddess was Kali, who is also depicted bare-bodied. These early fraternities eventually migrated following the trans Himalayan migration routes pivoting Mount Kailash. The Indus Valley civilization emerged on this route. They continued their journey and established the Egyptian and Greek civilizations. It is extremely crucial to establish the site of origin of R1 alpha and R1 bravo haplogroups in Y chromosome on the east coast of India 10,000 years ago because that will provide us the direction of the migration of the post-glacial period AMH fraternities and also the reason for the spread of Indian language and culture. About 10,000 years ago, R1 Bravo haplogroup in Y chromosome migrated to Africa, establishing the Egyptian civilization and spreading Pali language in the Mediterranean region. Similarly, about 5,800 years ago, R1 alpha haplogroup in Y chromosome migrated to Eastern Europe along with the spoken Sanskrit language. It is likely that a matriarchal culture evolved in India at a very early date. During this period, goddesses became popular. Kali is known as Adi Shokti or primordial energy. Probably she is one of the earliest concepts of religion and deity. She is depicted bare-bodied, suggesting her very early origin. There are 51 Adi Shakti Peets or ancient Kali temples spread across the Indian subcontinent. Interestingly, when their locations are connected, they possibly provide the direction of the early migration paths. Once I actually followed the Shakti Peets to trace the journey of Kali along the Himalayan rivers towards Mount Kailash. I traced the Shakti Peets from Mithila to Kathmandu and Muktinath in Nepal. Muktinath is located close to Kailash where a Shakti Peet is located. There are a number of Shakti Peets in the Kangra Valley in Himachal and a few in Punjab and Gujarat providing the migration path. One Shakti Peet is located on the Makran coast known as Hinglaj, where Kali crosses the border of the Indian subcontinent. It is extremely interesting that Lieutenant Wilford, a British officer, wrote an article in the Asiatic Researches in 1794 where he established that the Nile River was known as the Kali River and this is mentioned in the Padma Puran and Skanda Puran. Thus, it appears that the early migrating fraternities continued their journey beyond Kailash and the Makran coast and established their mother goddess in their distant settlements. In all probability, Kali manifested as Black Athena and Black Madonna in Europe. Why should a fair complexion fraternity worship a dark deity unless she was their deity since a very early period? It is possible that from Egypt, Black Athena reached ancient Greece and from Koilas, the Kali worshipping fraternities travelled via Turkey to Europe and established Black Madonna there. A majority of the rivers of the Indian subcontinent have feminine names like Ganga, Jamuna and Saraswati. It is likely that early matriarchal fraternities who migrated along these rivers named these rivers after their ethnic deity. Each of these river goddesses has a bahon suggesting the migration of specific fraternities along them. River Ganga has fish and makor as her bahon, Jomuna has turtle and Saraswati has avian goose as her bahon. In all probability, these were matriarchal fraternities in the early stage. Goddesses like Kali, Durga, Lakshmi, Saraswati, Monosha and many others are extremely popular in India. It is likely that these goddesses emerged during a matriarchal period when women were considered as the depository of knowledge, wealth and power. 
As the matriarchal community spread to distant destinations, we find emergence of goddesses like Nut, Hathor and Isis in Egypt. They were the early deities who ruled Egyptian civilization for a period before gods emerged in their pantheon. Similarly, in Greece, Athena was very popular at the early stage of the establishment of the European civilization. Athens, the ancient city of Greece, derived its name from Athena like Kolkata deriving its name from Kali. It is also possible that Troy and Tyre derived their names from Tara. It is extremely unlikely that these goddesses emerged during a patriarchal period. The matriarchal communities were probably known by different names like Kumari, Konna, Nari, Jubati and so on. There are fraternities like Newari from Nari and territories like Kumayun from Kumari. In distant lands, they were known as Kimerians, Nurustani, Gajni and by other such names. In Africa, their settlements were known as Cameroon from Kumari, Kenya from Konna and Djibouti from Djibouti. There is Konna in Turkey too. There are evidences to suggest that a matriarchal culture continued for a significant period which is not adequately recognized. It is important that we appreciate this phase of our past to understand various ground evidences. My humble mission is to investigate ground evidences and scientific data to establish, acknowledge and validate a period of matriarchal culture and its spread from India. As I stood in front of Pompey's pillar in Alexandria in Egypt, I realized the association of India with Alexandria. The Sphinx of Alexandria guarding Pompey's pillar complex appeared to me very similar to Durga, who is inseparably associated with the lion. In fact, the origin of the name Sphinx remains a mystery till today. Lieutenant Wilford mentioned in his article that it probably originated from the word Hingik meaning lion-like or associated with lion. This appears to be quite an acceptable explanation. I was overjoyed to read that the Sphinx was associated with the word Shingo which is an Indian word. I was equally thrilled when I went to the Philae temple in Aswan in Egypt. I found typical brachycephalic faces and slanting eyes of Isis created on the temple pillars remarkably similar to the faces of the deities of India, especially of Bengal. On top of almost every pillar, lotus images have been sculpted, when lotus is not a natural flower of Egypt. It appeared that thousands of years ago, Indian artists had created images of their own goddesses Sri, who manifested as Isis in Egypt. Moreover, Isis is shown with a yellow complexion very similar to Lakshmi or Sri of India who has lotus as her throne. At the entrance of the Edfu temple, a large image of falcon is bound to attract the attention of Indians. This mythical eagle is associated with Horus in Egypt. Our Hori or Vishnu also has a strikingly similar mythical eagle popularly known as Godura as his Bahu. I wonder if Hori has manifested as Horus in Egypt. This is similar to Osu manifesting as Osiris and Sri as Isis. Interestingly, like our Osur, Osiris is also green complexion, a rather unusual color of the skin. I thought I could identify a number of Vedic deities in the Egyptian pantheon. The image of the crocodile-faced god Sobek and his family in front of the Komombu temple in Egypt fitted perfectly with the Vedic deity Varun who has the crocodile as his vahun. Amun-Re, the fire god or Ognidev equivalent of Egypt, is associated with Ram while the Vahun of Vedic deity Ogni is Ram. Similarly, sun god of Egypt Ra appears to have derived his name from Ravi meaning Surya. It appears that the Egyptian deity Su derived his name from the hissing sound the wind or Vayu makes, suggesting that he is the manifestation of Vayu of the Vedas. Nut could also be a manifestation of the Vedic goddess Ratri who also has stars as her ornaments. Another interesting subject is the global color code which also remains almost undiscussed. The deities are often drawn in specific colors and in traditional painting this does not change. 
This is observed not only in the Indian pantheon but also in Egyptian art. It is likely that each color represents a global territory with which the deity is associated. It appears that the Indian territory is represented by the blue and yellow colors while the Egyptian territory by red, Persian by green and European by the white color. This explains why we find mention of Horitosho meaning green horse and Lohitosho meaning red horse in the Rig Veda which do not exist in nature. It is not only the identity of the deity but I go beyond to investigate the complexion, attire, vahon, posture, ostro or the weapon he or she carries and a few other things to recognize the site of origin and the direction of the spread. It is a particular fraternity which promotes the spread of their deity and thereby we identify the migration of the fraternity as well. In the second half of my book, I have discussed the evidences of reverse migration of the Indian origin fraternities from Egypt by different routes and in different periods. It is apparent that the land route migration took place along the Uttarapod and the Indus Valley Civilization. In fact, the mature period of the Indus Valley Civilization that is from 2600 BC to 1900 BC perfectly coincides with the period of the land route reverse migration from Egypt. As such, IVC or Indus Valley Civilization was located on the land route from India to Egypt. We find the emergence of the reverse migration animal symbols like the horse, boar, lion and peacock along the entire stretch of the Uttarapad. These animal symbols are found all over the subcontinent but their emergence in the Indian Himalayas, Nepal, Bhutan, Tibetan Plateau and Northeast India are striking as these species are mostly not found there. These regions are connected with Egypt and Europe through the Uttarapad. A number of ground evidences identify the migration paths along which both the onward and reverse migration had taken place. I have seen two friends sharing the ownership of a shop in Pokhara, Nepal. One gentleman was shot with brachycephalic features which is possibly a typical feature of the indigenous Indians. In this case, the face is roundish with breadth more than 80% of the vertical height of the face. While his friend was not only tall but also had an oligocephalic face with width of the face less than 75% of the height. This is a typical feature of some parts of Europe. I have also seen Kali in the Kamala Shagar temple of Tripura draped in a white sari suggesting her reverse migration nature. A dramatic change occurred in the reverse migration path when a direct sea route between the Red Sea ports and the west coast of India was established around 1500 BC. This new land route was possibly referred to as Dokkinapath which joined Uttarapath near Mount Kailash. The Shodosho Mohajanapadas emerged along these two highways which were exclusively recorded in the Jain and Buddhist texts written in Pali. This suggested that these were settlements of the Pali speakers. Their absence in Sanskrit records exposes a rivalry between the Pali and Sanskrit speakers. In all probability, reverse migration fraternities from Europe were Sanskrit speakers and the reverse migration fraternities from Egypt were Pali and Prakrita speakers. At this juncture, as the reverse migration fraternities from Egypt came by ship directly to the west coast of India, Nobody travelled along the old land route via the Indus Valley Civilization, resulting in its silent collapse. As such, we could not find any cause for the collapse of the Indus Valley Civilization. As 16 Mahajanapadas emerged in northern India, it gave an impression that Indus Valley Civilization population had shifted to the Gangetic Plains. Over a period, the sea route from Red Sea got extended to the Bay of Bengal, as the reverse migration fraternities from Egypt were keen to reach the matriarchal territories of Ganga Ridhi. The Prakrita speaking fraternities returned back to Bengal at this stage. The Egyptian deities Hathor and Isis created on the front facade of the Cairo Museum are associated with lotuses much like Lakshmi and Saraswati of the Indian pantheon. These images have striking similarities with the Sri or Lakshmi images of Chandraketugar, an archaeological site near Kolkata. Similarly, several terracotta artifacts of Chandraketugar have a pair of wings, a characteristic feature of Isis, the Egyptian manifestation of Sri. 
Ptolemy's map drawn at the beginning of the Christian era clearly shows five openings of river Ganga. In fact, we find a detailed description of the military powers of the king of Gongaridi in the notes of Greek and Roman scholars. It is possible that because the Egyptian people had spread from east coast of India, they had a compulsion to return to Gongaridi and Kiratdes marked as Kiradesh in the map. I wonder how a major event like the reverse migration of the Indian origin fraternities remained completely unnoticed and therefore undiscussed in academic forums. The concept of Indo-Aryan migration is often discussed, though it was considered as a primary migration from Europe to India and never as a reverse migration. On the other hand, any concept of reverse migration from Egypt is not known. At least, I have never heard any serious discussion about this subject. I have been exploring Northeast India since 1975. As I conceived the idea of the reverse migration of the Indian origin fraternities from distant lands, Manipur specially attracted my attention. Manipuris have features similar to Bengalis and Marathas. Vishnupriya Manipuri language has similarity with the Magadhi Prakritu, Marathi Prakritu and Saurashini Prakritu. They have adopted Gaudiya Chaitanya Vaishnavism. Professor Suniti Kumar Chatterjee has mentioned that they adopted Vaishnavism as early as 8th century AD. Their dynastic period started since 33 AD as per their chronicle Koitharul Kumbaba though the initial part of it is based on oral record. I was surprised to see several features of Bengal villages in Manipur including Tulushi Manchu and household looms. I felt an urgent need to align their distant connectivity. As I extensively explored the seven states of Northeast India, I realized that the reverse migration fraternities had settled in the region since a very early period. During the land route migration period, they had come through the Uttarapath along river Brahmaputra in the north. Many of them had settled in the higher reaches of the Himalayas like Monpas of Tawang, while some others descended to the Brahmaputra valley constructing Ita Fort, Vishmaknagar and Rukmini Nagar forts and so on. Sea route reverse migration fraternities arrived later and settled in the region using two different routes. One fraternity who arrived from the Red Sea region to the Bay of Bengal ascended along the rivers of Bangladesh to settle in Assam, Meghalaya and Tripura. Thus we find ancient Greek art popularly known as Hellenistic art in the 6th century Dahaparbhutiya temple of Tejpur. In Koila Shahar, Tripura we find unusual huge rock cut images of Shiva in the Unakoti temple complex. Indian origin people had extraordinary skill in rock cutting and handling huge stone blocks. It is possible that they created obelisk in Egypt and Stonehenge in Europe 3000 to 5000 years ago. Following their reverse migration, they continued to create such unfathomable stone blocks in the Indian subcontinent as the skill was indigenous. Natyang monoliths of Meghalaya created till as late as 1883 are 8 meters tall and are quite comparable in dimension to that of the Stonehenge of England. In fact, the horizontal round plates about 1 feet thick are more difficult to cut but they are not known to the world. The reverse migration fraternities from Red Sea region entered the Northeast Indian states from the east also as they ascended along river Iravati and Chinwin. The Ahoms reached along this route in the 13th century. The ancestral memorials of Ahom in Choraidao are known as Maidems, which are miniature replicas of the pyramids of Egypt. In fact, the oldest Egyptian pyramids were also known as Maidems. The Hebrew name of Egypt is Mirzaim. Mizos had been given visa by Israel as they were considered to be one of the lost tribes of Israel. One of the oldest Egyptian documents, Periplus of the Eritrean Sea, compiled at the beginning of the Christian era, mentions about the connectivity of the Red Sea and Northeast India. My extensive exploration of Northeast India provided me with definite evidences of its connectivity with the Red Sea region and Africa. 
I had to embark on an excursion to Egypt where to my surprise I found more evidences than I expected. Over a period I could arrange the entire process of the onward migration of the Indian origin fraternities and their reverse migration back to India. There is a need to arrange the pre-recorded period of India based on ground evidences. I intend to start a discussion on the following issues. India is a unique territory and is the only region other than Africa where AMH lived continuously for 65,000 years. They spread to the rest of Eurasia only during every interglacial period. The present population of Europe reached there from India 10,000 years ago during the last interglacial period. Newer AMHs like R1 Alpha and R1 Bravo formed on the Bengal coast during the last glacial period. They adopted various animal symbols and spread to distant territories like the Mediterranean coast, Egypt and Europe. A matriarchal community with their deities and Bengali language spread from the Bengal coast to these regions. At a later date, a reverse migration took place initially by the land route and later by the sea route. This is what has been compiled in this book with evidences. This is the first volume of a series of books which establishes that the Indian origin fraternities established the Egyptian civilization. Thank you very much for watching this video. This subject is little discussed and thus it may have evoked a series of questions in your mind. My latest publication, India in Egypt, deals with many such unexplained issues in reasonable details. Do connect with us to know more.